There's a certain pattern that has seven skirt styles all in one pattern. So why not make it four more times? They're all super easy to sew. Stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And it seems like this week has turned into a little bit of a skirt week. And now I've come back to one of my favorite patterns. This is actually the highest priced pattern at the Love Notions catalog. So the regular price for the Cibo Illusion Skirt Collection is usually $14.50. That means that today at $5 for the Feature Friday, it's a real steal. I love this pattern and I hadn't made it since the beginning of 2020. By that date, I had already made 10 of them. I mean, you can make so many, it's so easy. Whenever I'm making a project, I'm always thinking, you know, do I have a little bit left over for a skirt? Because depending on the style that you sew, they could take up very little fabric. I've been planning these four skirts for a pretty long time. Here you can see the liner. There are seven types of skirts in this one pattern. So you can make so, so many skirts and yeah, you'll never run out of options and views and mix and match, you know. So the basic one is the pencil skirt. It's a front and a back, as it says, pencil skirt. It's, I, I guess, one of the ones I've made the most. Then you have an A-line skirt. You have a swing style. I think it's a little fuller than a half circle skirt. It's not a full circle skirt. Then you have a dropped yoke with a flounce. It's basically fitted at the waist and hips. And then you have a circle flounce just sort of at the, from the thigh down. Really pretty skirt. The asymmetric wrap skirt, I think is one of my favorites. It's not a real wrap skirt, so there's no danger of anything flying open with the wind. You know, that layer that goes over the front is caught into the waist and the side seam. So it's really pretty, it has an asymmetric drop. Love it. Then you have a box pleat skirt. This one has a lot more volume at the hips. And then the seventh option is a gourd skirt. That means that it's three pieces on the front, three pieces on the back. Fit it at the waist and hips and then you get a little bit of volume towards the bottom. Out of the seven styles here, I always just make four of them. The one I never make is the A-line skirt, the swing skirt and the box pleat skirt. I know why I don't make the swing and the box pleat and that's just because they are skirt types that have more volume. And I prefer my skirts a little bit slimmer fitting. And the A-line, I don't know, I just haven't made it. It's not that I don't like it, I just haven't made it and look you know if you're still struggling to find your own style if you're still looking for the styles that make you feel good when you leave the house that just make you feel your best i wish you all <laughs> the patience in your journey because it can take a while to figure out what you like i'm 43 i've had decades to figure out what i like and i know i love a good pencil skirt and variations of that just skirts that are more fitted to me i think are much more versatile for me and I feel much better when I'm wearing this type of skirt than if I wear a fuller type of skirt. Usually when I use skirts that have a little bit more volume, they're attached to bodices and they're parts of a dress, but not just a skirt on its own. That's just me rambling about my own personal style. I know what I like, I know what I feel good in. The basics that you need to know is that this is a style designed for neat fabrics, all of these styles. You cannot make the Cebu Illusion skirt collection. Any of the styles here with a woven fabric, it just won't fit. Considering that the pencil skirt, the gourd skirt, the asymmetric wrap and the A-line skirt all have negative ease at the waist and hips, which means that you pull it up over your hips and the skirt is smaller than you. So it's around two inches. The ones that have a little bit more space at the hips are the swing and the box pleat. Those have a little bit more ease at the hips but it's still designed to be pull up, so you definitely need neat fabrics for that. Here on the screen, I'm gonna put some graphics of the basic fitting adjustments that I've made for my skirts. Basically, all I do is add length to the skirts. So whether it's a pencil skirt or the asymmetric wrap, I'm adding about two and a half inches. For the one that has the dropped yoke, I also add about two and a half inches there and then add the flounce. You know, so I am adding length to all of my skirt. I'm sewing a size extra large. So back in 2020, when I made five skirts in one afternoon, I did a whole session of batch sewing, which means I cut them all out together. I had little piles there and I filmed a really fun video. If you haven't watched, you can watch. It's got all the practicalities of sewing these skirts. If you haven't seen my previous videos about all the Cebu skirts I've made, I'll just show them here really quickly. A few of them, 10 already, plus these four and the first pencil skirts. Both of these have zipper hacks that I've got on the Love Notions YouTube channel. I showed in detail how to sew that. 
long separating zippers and I've worn these so much. One's black and one is red. Both are made with Ponte Roma, lovely. Then I have two more pencil skirts, prints. One is a Ponte black background with butterflies, so cute. And the other one is a scuba that's got a lovely design. It's a little geometric and it's got navy and pink tones and white. Love that, goes really, really nice with anything navy that I've made. So I, it's one of my favorite skirts and most worn skirts. Then one of the most interesting ones is one I made with stretch lace. So pretty in blue and I used ITY to line it. Then I made a hack where I created a type of different shape on the front. So it is a pencil skirt but it's a hack and I used a black and white cotton lycra for that. It's got a really nice drape for being cotton lycra, love that one. Then I took some athletic knit and I used the gourd skirt and matched it to the mug at Peplum Bodice. So it's a skirt and I played with the direction of the stripes. It's a really sporty looking dress I find. Another match with a bodice, I used the bodice of the Tessa sheath dress and added a drop yoke with a flounce but instead of a flounce I did a piece that overlaps around the front with buttons so that was a really cool hack and then another skirt I lined also is a drop yoke with a flounce single brush poly which is too lightweight for it so I do have a second layer underneath and those are just caught in the yoga waistband it gets rid of the fabric being so clingy on the body you know and then I guess one of my favorites and most worn as well is my other asymmetric wrap that I made with an athletic knit with stripes and prints and flowers. It's just so beautiful and I love that skirt so much. So those are the 10 I'd made before, plus the four I have now, 14 times, not too shabby. <laughs> it's a pattern I'm gonna keep using because so many styles there and you can always get really cute skirts and I made four in, in an afternoon. You know, it's not gonna take much of your time or effort and you can have quick happiness. This time I also prepared to batch sew I had four little piles on my table. I had cut out all my yoga waistbands there. For three of these, I'm just using a black athletic knit for my yoga waistband. And for one of them, I was able to get the yoga waistband out of the same fabric, out of the print that I'm using. And now my goal this time around was to complete outfits that are gonna be matchy-matchy as such. So it means that I have some type of top or jacket or some sort of thing that's gonna go on the top which is going to be the same as this fabric and I've had these little pieces of fabric just, just waiting for the right time for them to become skirts. All of my fabrics this time are pretty heavy. I'll mention them as I go but I'm not using any fabric that is lightweight. I knew from the get-go I was not going to use my serger to sew the side seams. I was just going to use the serger to clean up the seams. So that was my main goal and with the first skirt that I'm sewing here with this print I just took my time and searched all the side seams you know one by one I'm doing the asymmetric wrap skirt so I had a front and a back so all the side seams there and then I also searched all the edges of the asymmetric piece that was going to go over the top easy peasy for the asymmetric wrap skirt you need to finish the hems here on the center and on the bottom of this piece that goes over the top first before you put your skirt together so I did that I used a twin needle for that super neat just went along and prepared all my pieces first here you can see the pieces the asymmetric wrap there on the table it's extended it's all hemmed on the side with a twin needle it's all good and then on the side you can see the front and the back pieces cut out already for this skirt you just use the pattern pieces for the pencil skirt it's just that you add on that asymmetric piece that goes over the front and there on the top you can see the yoga waistband so to put this one together what you do is just use your table put your front skirt piece there first right sides up and then put your asymmetric wrap piece on top also right sides up match the side seam and then put your back skirt on the top so you have three layers and when you sew the side seam that has the three layers all of those have to go together and then on the other side you're just going to have two layers and that's how you get that asymmetric piece coming in from the side seam and wrapping over the front super easy for all these side seams i am using the sewing machine as i said i did not want to sew the seams on the serger i think it's just way too bulky so using a narrow zigzag my jersey needle and just going along and sewing all these seams and then after that you can do the hem of the actual pencil skirt so so easy to do this is my asymmetric wrap skirt this is the part that goes over the top as you can see this is the part that i had hemmed previously this and then this 
there is a little mitered corner in there very easy to do and then under here you just have a pencil skirt so it's really safe this is all for looks this comes down lower I love that I love skirts that have an uneven hem like that at the back it's like this and I have my yoga waistband. This is the only skirt where I had enough to cut my yoga waistband from or where the fabric was actually appropriate because you'll see for the other ones, the main fabric wasn't really appropriate for a yoga waistband. This is how it looks inside. This is what I mean about sewing with the sewing machine so I can press the seams open. I had searched everything prior and there is my hem with the twin needle. So, and on this side is the side where you have three layers. And this is where you have that asymmetric wrap piece coming in from also. So it's a very easy skirt to put together and it's really impactful visually. I love it. It's one of my favorite types. I have a top out of the same fabric. It's a neat top. It's fitted, I would say. It's got snaps down the front, short sleeves, and it doesn't really go with anything. I have nothing to wear it with. <laughs> so I knew I wanted to have a skirt that was this style fitted from far away it sort of just looks like a fitted dress but it's actually a two-piece ensemble you know I could wear it on its own if I want to I can also just wear it with a jacket on top so I've got a brown linen jacket that I've made recently, the moss jacket from Helen's Closet. I'm trying to build that brown to go with that jacket as well because not many things go with it. So this is perfect and I'm really, really happy with this skirt. This athletic knit is so soft, so, so soft. And I can decide whether I want to be matchy-matchy and wear it with a top. Another skirt I wanted to make was the gourd skirt. So this is a really cool one. You know, it's got three pieces on the front, three pieces on the back. You have two side pieces and you have a center piece. So two pattern pieces basically for this skirt. You can see them here on the table. Now this fabric is a neat crepe. It's pretty structured. It is stretchy, but it's structured. It sort of behaves like a woven, but it's not. So I definitely thought it was gonna be bulky as well to just serge these seams. I really wanted to clean up the sides first. And yeah, this took ages because there's six pattern pieces to this skirt. So I had to serge all the edges. And then after doing that, I was able to pin them all together. You can see it there on the table pinned. And then it was just basically six long seams to make this skirt happen. The hem, I did it by hand. And then I used an athletic knit for my yoga waistband. And this fabric I had left over from making a bomber jacket and also a dress. I knew the bomber jacket would look super cute with a skirt that matched. It's a more type of informal suit, you know. I don't usually wear the typical suit that is really formal, like the blazer and pencil skirt type thing. So if I can have a bomber with a skirt that matches, I think it's pretty unique. The fabric is just everything. Now I'm done with this fabric, I have nothing left. And there is my athletic knit for the yoga waistband. The hem, I did it by hand because this fabric would have looked not that great with the twin needle i think it would have just looked really bulky i've always been a big fan of these god skirts in my teens i used to make a ton of these types of skirts with woven with rayon usually i used to make them even with four on the front four on the back so eight pieces per skirt and what it does it keeps the waist and the hips slim while giving you a little bit more volume here that's why it curves out that's the shape and you can see my seams are all pressed open like this and there's my hem. Here you can see it first just with my Harmony blouse. One I've made recently that has lace insert type applique. It's a hot day, I could wear my skirt on its own of course. But then I can get out my bomber jacket if it's a cooler day and just put that on top you know if it was for winter I would wear boots with it probably put a scarf and that's all I need for winter right here there's just so many ways I could use this outfit and I'm just really really happy to have it happy I found the fabric in the first place for the next two skirts 
they are pencil skirts so the most basic type of skirt you can make I had minimal amounts of fabric and I have them both left over from making Metra blazers the Metra blazer is from Love Notions I have videos about this one on the channel and I made a black one just a few months ago that was sleeveless it's a scuba it's a stretch material but on one of the sides it looks like suede and on the other side it looks just really clean I love that little blazer it's sleeveless I left all the edges raw I did some top stitching I've worn it a whole bunch of times and I had a bit left over for the skirt I knew I wanted to make the skirt and I did do something different with this skirt you can see on the table there that I've got it pinned I've got the typical side seams but on the front I just made an extra seam so that it goes down my thigh I was gonna leave it open about four inches at the bottom to have a little slit not that much you know just a little bit so that was the only change I sewed this all on my sewing machine I did not serge these I left them raw inside this type of fabric is pretty bulky and it doesn't really press flat at all so I knew I was gonna top stitch these seams you know I had three eighths of an inch seam allowance in there so I used my quarter inch presser foot to top stitch but from the wrong side so I can really control that seam allowance it looks the same from the other side so my presser foot was really helpful and I just top stitched the side seams that long seam on the side for the little slit and this is my skirt look I've got I've got several types of black skirts different materials different styles they're all gonna serve different purposes but I really wanted the matching one to go with that sleeveless metro blazer here is one of the side seams you can see it's been top stitched flat inside so they're not gonna be bulky and I did press them but from the wrong side of the fabric I never want to press on the suede side because you could burn it and ruin it here on this side so going down my right thigh is this extra seam that I added it's just top stitched all the way down there's no special finish there hem is raw what I like to do with these when I leave the hem raw is just do top stitching a quarter of an inch from the edge just so it looks like there's something there so just side seams and that extra seam my yoga waistband as usual that keeps everything up and it's the easiest pencil skirt I've ever made I've got it paired here with a fitted white and black knit top love the look it's a fitted style i have to be honest i don't think i'd wear this outfit like you see it right here i think it just shows my curves too much i'd always want a little layer on top just get my trusty metra blazer that's sleeveless i could wear this on a hot day and i would be fine it looks a little bit formal but i could have styled it a bit more informal if i wanted to with different shoes I could definitely wear this with a long sleeve top for winter and a scarf and boots you know there's so many ways I can wear this took no fabric no time so nice And then the fourth one I made is green. This is to go with my other Metra blazer that I made. I also made that one with a scuba. This one's a scuba crepe though, textured green, it has two sides. That Metra blazer is also raw. It has no facings, no hems, nothing. Love it, I made it last year and I've worn it and I love it. It just doesn't go with many things. So I knew I wanted the skirt and I had just the right amount for the skirt. Now I didn't film anything for this one because this is the most basic one. It's just two side seams and that's it. And the yoga waistband. The hem is also raw. The side seams have also been top stitched down flat like this because it's the same thing it doesn't press really well so that's the way i deal with that and it's just so nice you can see it on also with my harmony top with the applique here on the chest you know this is such a basic skirt the harmony is sort of like a basic also but that applique just gives that something extra that makes the outfit a little bit more interesting so could definitely go out like that and be really really happy And then, you know, if I want my layer, I can get my Metra blazer and put it on top. And it's a little suit, but it's not too formal. I think it's fine. And there's so many other ways I could have styled this. And I love having these sets. These sets, because they're with solids, are just going to be workhorses. I'm going to love them so much. I mean, I already love them, but I still haven't worn them out into the 
to the real world, you know? Let me know what you think about matchy matchy things, the things I made out of print. Is that something you want or, or don't want or you think it's too much, too much print? I know a lot of people have dividing opinions about this. I'm sort of divided as well. I think I don't have a really strong opinion of yes and no. I think it's more related to how I wake up and what my mood is. If I want to dress entirely in a print, like you saw the bomber with the matching skirt or the fitted pencil skirt with the fitted top, it's all got to do with my mood, you know? I might just want to tone it down and wear solids on the top or not, but I think for sure there are days when I just want to be all out there in the print and I'll be really really happy with the matchy matchy solids I think those are a safe bet I think a lot of us can wear those really comfortably and not have too much conflict in our minds about it so I'd love to know what you think don't forget to check out the Cebu illusion skirt collection today Friday only five dollars a great day to get it for so much less and use my code Karina10 of course at checkout so you can get an extra 10% off. That's all from me today. Have an amazing weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye.